In today's video, I'll show you tips and techniques that can be applied to any mosaic glass on glass project. We'll go through the process of gluing pieces to the substrate and grouting. And bonus, this hurricane candle holder can double as a vase. Let's get to it. Welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we discuss tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. These strips of glass might look familiar if you checked out my last video. I showed you how to cut stained glass for a mosaic with a glass cutter and wheeled glass snippers. If you haven't watched it, I'll put a link here in the description card as well as down below so you can check it out. Glass as a substrate is a lot of fun to work with. It also has its challenges, but the end result is so worth it. The process for today's project can be applied to many other mosaic glass materials such as vitreous glass, glass rods, mille fiori, and glass beads. Keep in mind when you're selecting your materials for your glass on glass project that if the end result project is to have light showing through, you want to make sure that you pick out a transparent or semi-transparent material. And as I mentioned in the opening, today's project is a hurricane candle holder and this is a project for a client. Hi mom! Hi! And she has specific requests as far as the colors and the height of the substrate. I'll be using stained glass in red and gray as well as red flat back glass gems and I'll be grouting with white grout. Unlike most other mosaic substrates, a glass substrate needs to be cleaned before you start gluing the pieces on. And this is for a few reasons. First, we want the glass and adhesive to grip and hold onto the substrate as best as possible. So it's important to clean any dirt, dust, or sticker residue from the surface we'll be tiling on. Second, since we'll be covering the surface with a permanent piece of art, whatever is on the surface of our substrate will remain there forever if we don't clean it off. And if it's like the substrate for today's project, you can view the backside of the substrate when you look inside. So we want to make sure that our tile work is done on a clean surface and that only our tile work and the clear adhesive will be seen when you look inside. I like to clean the glass surface with simple green and a paper towel. This is a product I've always used when preparing glass for copper foil and soldering in stained glass. Okay, my substrate is clean and I'm ready to start tiling. The design for this piece is linear pieces of red and gray stained glass. And occasionally the columns of red stained glass will have a red glass gem as well. The idea is to vary where the grout line is, so the pieces of stained glass will be different lengths in order to stagger the grout line. And this will add a lot of visual interest. I'll glue the glass all the way around on the outside. The bottom will remain undone, untiled, it'll just be clear glass. So as I'm tiling, I want to make sure that the glass doesn't extend up above the rim or extend lower than the bottom. Now, although I've cut the strips of stained glass previously, I will still keep my glass nippers close by because I'm going to adjust the length of each of the strips of glass. The adhesive for today is Weld Bond. It's not the fastest drying glue, but it is odorless, it dries clear, and it's easy to work with. You'll notice that I put some pliers on both sides of the substrate to keep it from rolling. When applying glue to the back of a glass piece, you want to make sure you fully cover the piece of glass. This creates basically a barrier so that the grout can't get under the piece you glued down. Weld Bond isn't the fastest drying glue like I mentioned, so when gluing on a curved surface, you've got to be patient. I'll have to go slower in order to give the glue enough time to start drying and start holding onto the piece of glass that's on top of it. 
Remember, the bigger your piece of glass, the heavier it is. Good old gravity. This might be a project that I have to work on in sections or even over a few days if I can't do all of it in one sitting. Weld Bond has a very tight hold when it's dry, so I don't want to give any of the glass pieces the opportunity to slip and slide out of place and then dry that way. Here's a little tip. Sometimes when working on a curved surface with glass on glass, I'll apply the glue to the back of the glass piece like usual, and then I'll wait a minute or two before adhering it to the substrate. Then I'll shimmy the piece on the glass substrate slightly to create suction. That little bit of time when the air starts drying the glue along with creating suction can sometimes help speed up how quickly the glue and glass grip to the substrate. Another tip when gluing pieces onto a curved glass surface, you can apply a thin coat of glue directly to the substrate, then wait a few minutes for it to dry just a little, then adhere your piece of glass, which also has a little bit of glue on the back of it. You'll wanna do the gentle shimmy technique to create suction. This is a process that will take time and your attention. I wouldn't advise working too far ahead since you don't want the glue on the substrate to dry too quickly before you're able to cover it with glass. I worked on it row by row. This assured me that when I adhered the glass piece, I was gluing it to glue that was still sort of fresh, if that makes sense. Simply put, glass on glass, especially on a curved surface, takes time and patience. I was able to tile half of the substrate before I had to stop for the day to allow all of the glass to dry overnight. I didn't want to turn the substrate and continue working because that would have put all of the substrate's weight on those freshly tiled pieces. So. I waited 24 hours. Although the glue isn't fully dry, as you can see here, there's a little bit of white through the back of the piece, but it's dry enough that I can now turn it and put all of the weight of the substrate on those glass pieces. And I know that they won't move. After I reached the point where I couldn't tile anymore for the day in order to let things dry a bit, I continued to cut glass and get my rows ready for when I was able to get back to tiling. As you're tiling, make sure that your adhesive does not come up between your two pieces of glass. It's an easy fix, just get a toothpick in there, clean it out. You may notice that sometimes the weld bond as it's drying will pull the piece of glass next to it closer to it, almost like they are magnetic. And that's just as the weld bond dries, it tends to do that. So you just wanna make sure that you clean out your grout line if you're even going to grout your piece. And periodically, as you check to make sure things haven't slid, you also wanna check to make sure they haven't, over time, the weight of your glass hasn't caused the adhesive to come up in between your pieces of glass.
So I'll just continue on gluing the glass to the substrate. I'll periodically check the sections that I completed right before the section I'm working on just to make sure nothing has slipped or slid out of place because again, we don't want our pieces to dry out of place. The weld bond will eventually fully dry and be clear. And I'm not going to grout this piece until I'm closer to that point. I can see I'm a few days away from the glue fully drying and turning clear. So I will hold off on grouting until that happens. If I grout over it before the glue has dried, I'm sealing up the airway that's keeping the glue from drying. And I don't want that. I'm done tiling and I'll let it sit here for about 24 to 48 hours before I start grouting. Today's the day. My piece has been sitting here for many days, about a week, and I've checked over my pieces. Nothing has moved, so I'm ready to grout. So the client, I mean my mom, has selected white grout for this piece. I'm going to mix up some grout now. If you'd like to see how I mix up small batches of grout, I'll put a link here in the description card as well as down below, and you wanna to go to the grouting chapter of that video. I'm gonna grout this piece like I would most others. There is a lot of glass or tessera on the surface, so there's not a big need to mix up a lot of grout for something like this. Because it is circular and it is prone to rolling off the table, I will always have one hand inside to make sure it doesn't roll. I'm gonna go over the outside first and then I'll come back and give a nice clean rim as well as bottom with the grout. Because I'm using white grout, I'm not grouting on something like newsprint which would come off onto the grout. Instead I've got this nice white banner paper which is pretty thick. I do have some pieces of newspaper underneath just to save my work table. And you just want to do the circular clockwise counterclockwise motion when grouting, just pushing it into the areas. These pieces are really, really tight on here. The weld bond adhesive is pretty substantial when it comes to this. It's, it's quite superior with glass on glass. So I'm just going in clockwise, counterclockwise motion on the surface. If your item gets too heavy, certainly put it down on your work surface and work that way. That works just fine. You just wanna make sure you're not banging it onto your work surface. And you'll see that it goes rather quickly because again, there's just, it's pretty straightforward. Yes, it's a curved surface, but it's a flat curved surface. It's not a whole lot of nuance here. And I'm already done with the surface. And I'm gonna let it sit while I do the bottom here. And I'm just gonna go along the edge. Gently go along the edge, mostly so that it doesn't cut up my glove more than anything. I don't, these pieces aren't going anywhere. But what you wanna do is just go around and create a smooth edge and that may involve making sure that the grout on the surface meets the grout on the bottom and creates a, a nice 90 degree grout line. You don't want to be missing any grout on the surface area because then that will cause a problem as you run your finger along the bottom here. Okay, this is looking good. Grout normally does not want to stick to glass, so you're sort of creating a false edge when you're doing this. Going along, making sure that the grout on the side of your piece, your surface area of your piece, is at a 90 degree angle with the grout up here. So you're just creating this nice clean edge, finished off looking on the top. Okay, and that is looking good and I'm just gonna let it sit here for about 10 minutes to let it dry and then I'll come back and clean it off. The mosaic has been sitting here about 10 minutes drying and I'm gonna start cleaning off the surface area with dry paper towels. I don't like to bring more moisture to the grout and I just go in clockwise and counterclockwise motions. This is just the initial cleaning off of the surface. I'm so excited. As you can see, I'm cleaning it off while holding it up 
off the table, but certainly depending on how big your glass on glass project is, you may need to rest it on the table because it's just, it's heavy, it can get heavy. And it cleans so nicely because the grout does not want to stick to the glass. You want to make sure that you remove the grout so that it doesn't stay on there and cause a grout haze. As I go around, it's getting cleaner and cleaner. This is one of those projects where you definitely don't really have to worry about a piece coming off because glass to glass is a pretty tight hold, especially if you get enough adhesive behind each piece. Okay, and you want to clean off the entire bottom, not just where you grout it. I think it turned out beautifully. I love the white line going through, breaking up the red and the gray glass. I think there's a little bit of drama here between the red and the gray and the pieces of glass versus the glass gem. If my mom does decide to use this as a vase, I'll let her know that it should not be submerged in water. Just clean it out with a wet cloth and let it air dry. Whether it's a votive or a candle inside, it just lights up those colors in such a stunning way. I know my mom is going to get so much enjoyment out of this and that feels good and makes me happy. Question of the day. Let me know in the comments if you've ever created a glass on glass mosaic. I'd love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. What is going on with me today? Oh my goodness. Just starting and I'm already that one was a keeper. Wow, what is up with me today? It's because I'm rushing. There's a thunderstorm coming, so I'm trying to get this out and done before the boom and boom, boom, boom starts and the rain. Okay, I mean, should I just... What is going on? I can't talk. I can't talk this afternoon. Finally, I said it. All in one thing. Yes. If you're looking for more mosaic inspiration, you can check out one of these two videos. Until then, see ya!